Turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Jesus reveals God's truth. Jesus reveals God's true intent behind the law, part 11, the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, day 245. Since January 20th, 2017, slash day 612, since January the 1st, 2016. So what is the gospel? According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, the gospel is embodied in these words from the Word of God. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 2.2 2 says, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. A.J. Gossip said, The core and essence of the gospel is its tremendous and glorious revelation of how deadly is God's hatred of sin so that he cannot stand having it in the same universe as himself and will go to any length, will pay any price, and will make any sacrifice to master and abolish it not only in the world but in our hearts. Amen. Somebody. Please remain standing. Matthew chapter 5 verses 31 and 32 is where we are. As we continue to preach about Jesus. More about Jesus would I know. Verse 31, it hath been said, Jesus said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for all of your holy word. Thank you for making the gospel plain. Have your Holy Spirit uh, to continue to work mightily in the hearts and minds, souls and spirits of people. Open their blinded eyes, unstop their deaf ears, and save their souls. And Lord, we pray that you would forgive us and cleanse us of all sin and all unrighteousness in this place. Create within us the right kind of heart and spirit, crush and crucify our flesh, and fill us with the power, the unction, and the anointing of your Holy Spirit. And to preach your holy gospel once again, and we pray 
that your Holy Spirit, understanding that you said in your word, it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, say the Lord. We pray and we ask that your Holy Spirit would move upon the hearts of those who are lost, who don't know you as Savior. Open their blinded eyes, unstop their deaf ears, and save their souls. And we pray that you would revive those of us who are saved once again and take us back to our first love. Glorify your holy name. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the early church father, Athenagoras, said a person should either remain as he was born or be content with one marriage, for a second marriage is only a special adultery. He who deprives himself of his first wife, even though she is dead, is a cloaked adulterer resisting the hand of God and dissolving the strictest union of flesh with flesh formed for the continuance of the race. And ladies and gentlemen, God's design for marriage between a man and a woman. There's no such thing as marriage between a man and a man or a woman and a woman. That's something that wicked people have made up. A man, somebody. We're talking about that beautiful thing that goes on between a man and a woman that nobody knows about it. You know, that nobody knows what goes on between a man and, and a woman. Only God knows. And that's why you better not believe everything you hear uh, as to what's happening in a marriage because you really don't know. God knows, that husband knows, and that wife knows. God's design for marriage has not changed since the beginning of time. There's no such thing as homosexual marriage. There's no such thing as two lesbians marrying and then adopting children because they can't have children. There's no such thing as a man turning himself into a woman and all other nonsense. And that is bearing out because under Obama, those transvestites who went and got all these operations, now they want their penis back. My preacher, do you have to be so blunt? Uh, they want their manhood back. And you, I doubt if you can get it. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't even know what you're talking about. The New Testament, ladies and gentlemen, reaffirms that one man and one woman should remain together for life. It's God's design and it is a beautiful thing. I was walking into or taking my boys into McDonald's one day to get a bite to eat and use the restroom. And I saw this couple coming into the old couple, almost decrepit coming into the McDonald's door, bless their hearts. And they were holding hands. They, they both had to be hitting 80 all day long. And I marveled and I turned around. I said, how long have y'all been married? Oh, we've been married for 65 years. I said, what? And I said, you all are still holding hands 65 years that y'all go on a little McDonald's uh, date? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We love it. We love holding hands. I said, man, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. 65 years. He said, don't you hold hands? I said, no. <laughs> 
But I'm glad y'all hold hands. My God bless you. Scripture indicates, ladies and gentlemen, that due uh, to the hardness of man's wicked heart, sinful heart, greedy, selfish heart, there is at least one very specific exception to the no divorce rule. It is contained in the parenthetical phrase of Jesus' statement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth, causeth her to commit adultery. Because it is assumed that she's going to marry somebody else because she has no other means to survive back in the day. And do you know, there are some women in the world, I know some, I got some in my family. They, they can get a husband. There are some women in the world who know how to get a husband. Even if they've been divorced two or three times, they, they know how to get it. They know it. They, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. Where some women don't know how to do it, they know how to do it. So, uh, uh, and so there are women who know uh, how to do that. And back in the day, you had to know how to do that if your husband gave you a, a, a writ of divor divorcement and divorce papers. The key phrase here is saving for the cause of fornication. The term saving for means except for, in order to accurately interpret this, we must be mindful of the context in which Jesus is speaking. He is speaking in a context in which only men could file for divorce and in which there were two schools of thought on the reasons a man could legitimately give for divorcing his wife. One school of thought said the cause only could only be adultery. The other school said the cause could be anything at all. If she displeased him in any way, if he sat down and the food was too salty, that was a cause for divorce. So with that in mind, we can safely conclude that Jesus is saying that a man who divorces his wife for any cause other than adultery by default causes his wife to commit adultery. The assumption being that the divorced woman would be compelled to marry another man. And of course, the man who married her would be committing adultery as well. In Matthew 19, Jesus expands this statement, declaring that the man who divorces his wife and marries another woman also commits adultery. There he says, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And this is one of the reasons why I and many other Christians do not want to get into that game. We do not want to be living in adultery. And by, by the way, it's one thing to commit adultery. It's another thing to live in adultery. There's something wrong somewhere if that does not bother you. If that does not bring conviction in your heart. If that, if that does not scare you a little bit. You don't want to be living in adultery. The cloud of condemnation of committing adultery over you all of the time. The phrase, except it be for fornication, is called the exception clause, if you will. By scholars. Theological scholars. By this rule, divorce is allowable if a spouse has committed fornication 
or committed some sexual sin. So what is fornication here? According to Charles Wendall, the Greek word Jesus used for fornication is the word from which we get our modern word pornography. Fornication in this verse is based on the word pornea, the root of which means prostitute, whore, or whoremonger. Jesus could have used the word malazia, mo, mo, the word used specifically for adultery, but he chose a broader term. Pornia, when applied to illicit sexual activity among unmarried couples, is often translated fornication. When applied to illicit sexual activity among those who are married, pornia is often translated adultery. In either case, pornia is considered fornication. So watching pornography can get you into trouble. Generally, the Greek term refers to sexual activity that is immoral. That is, you have a wife in the room. For whatever reason, you don't want to get jiggy with it with her. You look at pornography in the other room and you masturbate. Preacher, can you, do you have to be so blunt? Immoral activity, illicit and unnatural. It's unnatural for you, sir, ma'am, to have a marriage partner and you are committing adultery with people you don't even know masturbating while you're watching pornography. That's grounds for divorce. For this reason, some scholars interpret the term loosely and apply it also to all sexual sins. Not only watching pornography and masturbating and you got a wife and you have a husband, but also adultery, homosexuality, bestiality, you wicked devil, laying there trying to have sex with your pet dog, a pet snake, a pet whatever, wicked, you, you got to be sick in your head. And may God save the dog from you. May the people who love dogs and care for dogs come and pick up your dog. Never to let you have a dog again, you nasty devil. Rub it up against an animal. You, 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 you're sick in the head. But this kind of mess goes on everywhere. All around the globe. Incest. You nasty devil. Having sex with somebody who's in your family. Incest. This goes for uh, stepfathers and stepmothers lusting after the children of your husband or your wife, lusting after your brother in law, your sister in law. You nasty devil. And the such like. All of that grounds for divorce. Men trying to have sex with their daughters. If you ever get caught trying, that's grounds for divorce. Mothers trying to have sex with their sons. If you get caught doing that, that's grounds for divorce. 
pornea, fornication, anything wicked like that, prostitution. You married, but yet you making some money on the side while your husband is out there working because you're a prostitute. Got husbands who are uh, homosexual prostitutes making money on the side. Talking about they hustling. They hustling. Hustling my foot. You are committing fornication, you lying devil. And that's grounds for divorce. What about all this money I made for the family? No, we don't want that money. That money comes from prostitution. And sad to say we got some Christian people who claim to be Christians. Just, just the other day, three preachers running a little uh, illicit uh, sexual slave thing going on with children. Priests have been doing it for years, Catholic priests. But let's keep in mind, no matter how immoral these activities are, Jesus only permitted divorce for such offenses. He did not command it. Now, on some of these things that I mentioned, uh, you ought to divorce uh, the individual. If they mess with a child, divorce them. And divorce them. If they even, even tried to mess with a child, it's time for a divorce. If you and the other, they got you in the other room and they in the bed with the dog and you caught them doing something to the dog, listen to me. Uh, you need to not just walk to the divorce court. You need to run. Run. Take the dog and run. Take the dog and run. You, you got a devil on your hand. You see that devil trying to kiss the dog in, in a romantic sense. Take the dog and run. Shoot the joker and keep getting up. <laughs> you have my permission. Oh, you because you're a wicked, sick-minded individual. Oh, yes. Now, on the other hand, a movie came out some years ago. I, I think it was called Fireproof. Now, that man should not have had to go through the hell. That woman, who happened to be an adulteress herself, he should not have had to go through what he went through. There should not have been any talk of divorce. Because the man almost watched pornography. Almost. Don't tell me. I watched the movie. Me and my family, we thought we were going to get. And I said, man, I, 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 this man here is a he's halfway decent man. I'm concerned about this, this woman horning around with the doctor at the hospital. Are you kidding me? You know, everybody just loved that. You know why people love that in the Christian community? Because Christian, people in the Christian community like to beat up on the man. The man is such a devil. Look at him. Almost watching pornography. And she up there talking to a joker uh, uh, behind his back. And trying to blame it on him. Because he just go by the computer and hit a key. Almost watch pornography. And she all out of shape. Been out of shape. <laughs> I just get my husband he almost watched pornography and I can't stand it and so I want to go and date this doctor I don't, ever, I don't want to ever see that movie again it's based on a lie that's a bunch of mess and I said this, 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 was, this was a good man compared to most men he was a good man she needed to thank God for her husband War, fireproof go get it and watch it I'll never watch it again. In that case, they need to work it out. Maybe she's doing or not doing something for him to have to go and look at somebody on the screen. In most cases, if you all would just have sex together, the person would not be interested in watching pornography because he just had sex. 
Most men just want to have sex. That's why they pass by the computer and be looking at something they ought not be looking at. Some men are trying to be, to be quite frank, get it up for you. And trying to get excited about you. Trying to have some energy to get to going with you. So, uh, uh, in a case like that, maybe you can work with that man and not divorce him. Yes, even if your spouse has committed adultery or some other sexual, no, just adultery with a woman, not a homosexual. If your husband is a homosexual, run, don't walk to the divorce court. You have my permission. You said preacher does that happen? Yes, it happened. Yes, with even people in the church. I, I, I was just totally blown away, shocked. We invited a man to sing at one of our conferences, and he was married to a beautiful young lady, and I was single at the time, and and uh, and I'll just be honest with you, nothing happened between me and the lady, but but she, she there, there was there something was going on there where she was attracted to me or whatever, and real. Uh, flirty, flirtatious, or whatever, with me, and I didn't understand. I said, "We're hiring your husband to, to come and sing at the conference, uh, and what what is going on?" And uh, and I didn't know what was happening. Come to find out, she evidently knew. We got them got them out of the military and uh, helped them get set, settled at Tennessee Temple University. I thought they were going to go on for God, a young couple. And uh, she came home from work one day, found him in the bed with candles all around, beer all around, in the bed with a man. And she called me. And I was lying in my bed alone when she called me. The devil is a lie. She called me and asked me what she should do. I said, well, you need to get out of that marriage, but you can't come down here with me. So I don't know what you're going to do. And, uh, but the devil was tempting me so much so that one of the questions I asked the woman, do you have AIDS? Because the devil messed with my mind. He, hey, boy, there's a woman for you right there. Ready to go? Get, 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 get out of that homosexual situation. <laughs> That's what the devil told me. I, I didn't do it. By the grace of God, I did not do it. Uh, they, were in, they were up in Tennessee. I was down in Georgia at the time. And I, I, I said, no, 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 no. I can't be involved with that. Now, but then I understood this little powerful thing that was happening between her and I when we met at the conference and everything. Now I, 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 I understood. But by the grace of God, with the help of a pastor friend, they got back together and now he's song leading in the church and and they're still together, so praise be to God. Everything turned out better than what it should have. But if he's a homosexual, my advice is to run, not walk. If she's a lesbian, sir, try to work with her. You said, preach, that's a double standard. Well, you know, I have more mercy on the women. I think there's some things you can do to help her. But if, if she's still going to be going after a woman, then let her go. And go ahead and get a divorce. But try to work with her if you can. Because all women are beautiful to me, so there's no, I'm not as hard on the women as I am the men. But it's still a wicked sin from hell. But yeah, I believe that you can try to help her get out of that if you if you know what to do, and, and and pray and ask God to help you. 
But if you see a man with a man, there's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's no hope. There is no hope. You say, preach, you just, you just, you just too much. You ought not to say that. Yes, even if your spouse has committed adultery or some other sexual sin, in God's eyes, it is better for you to remain together. By the grace of God, if you can. But you're wrong if you stay together with a dog molester. You're wrong if you stay together with a child molester. You're wrong if you stay together with a homosexual. You're wrong. You're both, as far as I'm concerned, both committing sin. Because you are enabling this person uh, to continue to do this evil. That is how much God hates divorce. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you for your holy word. Because, Lord, I know that uh, marriage is, is a beautiful thing uh, if you stick with it and can get better and better as time goes on and I will not trade my salvation experience your chastening hand experience in my life and I will not trade being married uh, for anything else in my life I have enjoyed my marriage and family and, uh, and one of the reasons is because I stayed with it by your grace and uh, it's a far more beautiful thing now than what it was. And uh, I do pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would help Christians to stay with their marriages long enough until things get better and they can enjoy their lives together and raise their children until death uh, separates them and Lord help us all as Christians to uh, get back to the old land landmarks regarding marriage forgive us of our sins of being ready to jump and run out of our marriages and go with somebody else and then that, that increases sin and adultery and it destroys the children so Lord help us to repent those who are separated, help them to humble themselves, act mature, and go back to their mates. And uh, those who have already married somebody else, uh, Lord, uh, work in their lives to, and show them what they need to do. And we pray that in the end, your holy name will be glorified, Jesus Christ will be exalted. Souls will be saved and lives changed. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, beloved, if you are with us today and you do not yet know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior in the free pardon of your sins, allow me to show you how you can place your trust and your faith in Jesus Christ for salvation from sin and from hell. First, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's law. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Secondly, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. We die physically and our body goes to the grave we die spiritually and our soul goes to hell 58 souls went out into eternity from a concert some had trusted jesus christ as savior and they're in heaven some went straight to hell 
where would you go, heaven or hell, if you got shot tonight? That leads me to my third point. Please accept the fact that you are on the road to hell right now. If you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, for Jesus Christ to preach more on hell than anybody in the Bible, he preached more on hell than he did about heaven. Jesus Christ is the one who said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is an awful place. In hell you will be tormented forever. In hell you will experience a darkness that you can feel. In hell you will be forever separated from God. Mercy, grace, love, and Jesus. So dear friend, you need to put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ today. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That is, perish in hell, but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart. You say, preacher, I have been divorced. Can God save me? Yes, he will. You got, you got your divorce before you got saved. It's a part of your sin package. Just confess it as sin. Confess your other sins. Repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll clean you up. Just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord of glory. I have determined, my dear friend, not to know anything but Jesus Christ and him crucified. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Everything goes through him. Every blessing you'll ever want comes through Jesus Christ. Just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died for your sins, was buried, and he rose again. And pray and ask him to save your soul. And he will save you. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9. That if thou, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And shall believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou, you, shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Pray and ask him to save you. Repeat after me right now the sinner's prayer. God will hear your prayer and save your soul based upon your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will be moved out of the hell column into the heaven column. So that if you got shot tonight, God forbid, you'll go to heaven and not to hell. Follow me in prayer phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have sinned against you. Yes, even I have lied to other people. I'm living a lie right now. I have stolen things from others. And I have done wrong in your sight. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. As, as I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. And change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to repent and to turn from my old life and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead. 
allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. If you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please email me at dw3 at gospelitesociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Dear friend, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good is our prayer.